Today, we are in Ludington and we're having a snow globe day. Now, if you don't know what that is, let me explain. There's a moment after someone shakes up a snow globe where the flakes are still finding a new place to settle into the scene and flickers of glitter still float about the globe. That's a snow globe day. That's what we're experiencing now. The snow came through Ludington with fresh powder settling onto the trees, creating a totally new scene for us to explore. So we're right here at the warming shelter and we're going to make our way out to the lighthouse. It's stunning. This is absolutely amazing. You're familiar with what Ludington State Park looks like, but then you shake up the snow globe and then you get this, the perfect amount of snow on top of the trees, just a little bit coming down and then just uh, awesome covering. I can't wait to see what the lighthouse looks like. That view of the pond right there makes me super excited for the hike around Lost Lake later because that's going to be beautiful out there. This is like a preview of what that hike is gonna look like later today. One of my favorite parts of going out to the Big Sable Point Lighthouse is the first view you get of the lighthouse when you're on the path out here. So we're just about there. We've been here in the winter before, but never with this fresh coating of snow like this. It was mostly ice when you were here the first time. I think I'm gonna try to go and do a lap and get as many photos and like cool cinematic video clips as I possibly can before we really like hike around it and disrupt this fresh powder. This spot right here with this view, this is hard to beat. So I'm gonna have a snack, but I'm gonna play just a little bit more of the scenic stuff that's happening around here because I can't get enough of it. I keep saying, all right, all right, that's enough, let's go. But then I come around the corner and I see this angle right here. So I promise, this is the last photo. All right, and then now we're gonna go start the hike. In order for winter to be the most amount of fun, this is where gear is super important. You'll hear me say that in the summer, a lot of times all you need is a good pair of hiking shoes, but to be outside for extended periods of time, gear is everything. So I wanna talk about fat biking out here and what gear we're using and riding. The majority of what I wear in the winter is definitely based on snowboarding gear. That's typically what I wear. But you can see that Andy is going to be able to extend some of his fall gear. And this is more hiking gear in which he's adding another layer on underneath. These pants right now, they're just uh, like a fleece lined pant and they're, uh, have good warmth, but also a good flexibility and mobility for biking and hiking. And then, like I always say, socks are like the most important thing that I never knew was so important. So wool socks are a must. The difference between a fat tire bike and a regular bike is that it's like a fat tire bike is the equivalent of having snowshoes. It allows you to float just a little bit more and it helps when you're actually trying to trudge through snow like this and it makes it so that you can still bike out to here. And this one right here is just a personal preference. I go goggles over sunglasses most of the time in the winter. I do like the warmth and the coverage that it puts over my face because it helps me um, stay out of the wind a little bit more. When it melts on the goggle, it's easier to see and you feel like you're wiping it less than if I had a pair of sunglasses on. Again, that's just personal preference, but it's what I like. 
places like this, they're super helpful because if you are out in the cold and your gear is just not quite enough and you need to go in and warm up the warming shelter like this, um, it'll be open during different times during the winter and you can come in here, warm up and then get back out and keep going. And they've got guided snowshoe hikes and lantern lit hikes. Uh, pause it right here so that you can read when all those events are taking place if that's something that's interesting to you. If you don't have your own gear, they will actually provide the snowshoes for you. So we're gonna keep hiking now. This bird's nest. There are blue jays everywhere right now. They're the, you can tell they're blue jays because they're the ones that sound like little missiles. They're like, you. That's as good as I got. You. Well, ducks. Ducks are a lot easier to get on camera. I always just say duck, but if you're wondering specifically, those are mallards. I like that this is a, a four season state park. I mean, I understand why some of them shut down, but. I am a Four Seasons person. I want a Four Seasons park. And that's why I'm out here today. Oh, this is cool, Andy. I'm just realizing right now that we're actually on the trail that they use during the lantern lit hike. And uh, <clears throat> I feel like I should explain that just a little bit more. So I'm gonna do that while we keep going down this section of the trail. These lantern lit hikes that I talked about just a little bit earlier are just one of the programs that the Friends of Ludington State Park put on. And here's a list of a few of the other park services that they provide. What I'm saying is they're very important to the comfort of enjoying this park. And that's why we're finishing up our hike here and then we're heading to Ludington Bay Brewing. They are one of the participants in Brewfest in downtown Ludington on January 27th. The event takes place under this pavilion and it feels like the perfect amount of get outside and have fun while still keeping a roof over your head. And as for us today, well, we're sampling a few of the beverages that they'll have on January 27 at the festival, but we're doing it in one of the igloos on the patio of the brewery. 